What is up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today's reaction video is the Star Spangled Banner as you've never heard it. Now I have done this reaction before and I know we're going to get a lot of comments about potentially the accuracy of this but I have done the actual another video of this and pretty much this is there or thereabouts but a little bit exaggerated um, but from what I've been literally told and from when I've done this reaction it basically shows why the Americans are so patriotic and why they love the flag and stuff like that and, uh, and why they don't like let it touch the ground and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. This is what this kind of video goes into. It's an absolutely awesome video and to be fair, you know, I'm not American and you're not, but it makes me feel patriotic for America. Last time I watched this at least, it's one of them. It's a fantastic story. You guys wanted to see Millie react to it, so we're going to get straight into it. Smash that like button if you want to see more content like this. Let us know in the comments what other videos you want, even if I've reacted to it, because uh, you're enjoying me so far, aren't you? Yeah. Uh, so yeah, let us know in the comments guys and let's get straight into it. The Star Spangled Banner, as you never heard it before. Before I get into it, you know what the Star Spangled Banner is? Mm. That is the name of a song of the National Anthem. Oh right. I okay? That. So it's like, as you've never heard it before, so you're yeah. telling the story of it. Okay? okay? Alright, let's go. There was a lawyer once, his name was Francis Scott Key. He penned a song that I'm sure you're aware of. You've seen it. It's in most hymnals throughout our churches. It's called the National Anthem. It is our song as an American. We go, however, to a ball game. We stand in our church services and we sing the words of that song. And they float over our minds and our lips and we don't even realize what we're singing. Most of us have memorized it as a child, but we've never really thought about what it means. Let me tell you a story. Francis Scott Key was a lawyer in Baltimore. The colonies were engaged in vicious conflict with the yeah, mother country. Did that. We're sorry. <laughs> We're sorry. Yes, it of this conflict and the protractedness of it, they had accumulated prisoners on both sides. The American colonies had prisoners and the British had prisoners. And the American government initiated a move. They went to the British and they said, let us negotiate for the release of these prisoners. They said, we want to send a man out to discuss this with you. They were holding the American prisoners in boats about a thousand yards offshore. And they said, we want to send a man by the name of Francis Scott Key. He will come out and negotiate to see if we can make a mutual exchange. On the appointed day in a rowboat, he went out to this boat and he negotiated with the British officials. And they reached a conclusion that men could be exchanged on a one-for-one -one basis. Francis Scott Key, jubilant with the fact that he'd been successful, went down below in the boats and what he found was a cargo hold full of humanity, men. Wow. And he said, man, I've got news for you tonight. You're free. Like, oh, just imagine being in them conditions on a boat as well. It's just, you just can't imagine it, can you? It's no, probably no windows. Awful. Probably no windows at all. Just dark down You're there, just man. all squished together as well. It's... Yeah, it's not good at all. He said, tonight I have negotiated successfully your return to the colonies. He said, you'll be taken out of this boat, out of this filth, out of your chains. As he went back up on board to arrange for their passage to the shore, the admiral came and he said, we have a slight problem. He said, we will still honor our commitment to release these men, but it'll be merely academic after tonight. It won't matter. And Francis Scott Key said, what do you mean? He said, well, Mr. Key, he said, tonight we have laid an ultimatum upon the colonies. Your people will either capitulate and lay down the colors of that flag that you think so much of, or you see that fort right over there, Fort Henry? He said, we're going to remove it from the face of the earth. He said, how are you going to do that? He said, if you will, scan the horizon of the sea. And as he looked, he could see hundreds of little dots. And he said, that's the entire British war fleet. He said, all of the gunpowder, all of the armament is being called upon to demolish that fort. It will be here within striking distance in a matter of about two and a half hours. He said, the war is over. These men would be free anyway. He said, you can't shell that fort. Wow, that's amazing. He said, that's, that's a large fort. He said, it's full of women and children. Yeah, he quite a beautiful fort, but the fact that the greed from the British yeah, are just coming to absolutely obviously, destroy yeah. it. I know, yeah. Because this is, obviously, this is based in 1812, I believe. I didn't know it was when I actually reacted to it originally. I thought it was part of the revolution. Um, but it is actually in 1812, after the revolution. So it's kind of like the British just greed, wanting to go back in, punish the Americans and take them back, pretty much. And Oh, it's awful. I mean, yeah, like you said, it's absolutely stunning, isn't it? But yeah. Absolutely awful the fact they wanted to bomb him. He says it's predominantly not a military fort. 
He said, don't worry about it. They said, we've left them a way out. And he said, what's that? He said, do you see that flag way up on the rampart? He said, we have told them that if they will lower that flag, the shelling will stop immediately. And we'll know that they've surrendered, and you'll now be under British rule. Francis Scott Key went down below and told the men what was about to happen. And they said, how many ships? He said, hundreds. The ships got closer. Francis Scott Key went back up on top and he said, men, I'll shout down to you what's going on as we watch. As twilight began to fall and as the haze hung over the ocean as it does at sunset, suddenly the British war fleet unleashed. <coughs> He says, the sound was deafening. There were so many guns that there were no reliefs. He said, it was absolutely impossible to talk or hear. He said, suddenly the sky, although dark, was suddenly lit. And he says, from down below, all he could hear the men, the prisoners, saying was, tell us where the flag is. What have they done with the flag? I mean, imagine being like them prisoners in that thing, not being able to do anything. You just know, can't imagine, can you? Oh, it is awful and also again this it is a little bit uh, dramatized in terms of what from what i've been told anyway that there wasn't a hundred there was a lot less than a hundred and stuff like that but still but the main the idea is still the main principles yeah. of that is absolutely mental flag is the flag still flying over the rampart tell us one hour two hours three hours into the shelling Every time the bomb would explode and it would be close to the flag, they mm -hmm. could see the flag in the illuminated red glare of that bomb. And Francis Scott Key would report down to the men below, it's still up. It's not down. The admiral came and he said, your people are insane. He said, what's the matter with them? He said, don't they understand this is an impossible situation? Francis Scott Key said, he remembered what George Washington had said. He said, the thing that sets the American Christian apart from all other people in the world is he will die on his feet before he'll live on his it's knees. American spirit, isn't it? Yes, sums up American people, isn't it? Just for that the Admiral flag. said, we have now uh, instructed flag. all of the guns to focus on the rampart to take that flag down. He said, we don't understand something. Our reconnaissance tells us that that flag has been hit directly again and again and again, and yet it's still flying. We don't understand that. But he said, now we're about to bring every gun for the next three hours to bear on that point. Francis Scott, he said the barrage was unmerciful. All that he could hear was the men down below praying. The prayer. Just can't imagine. God keep that flag flying. Absolutely awful, isn't it? Where we last saw it. Just because the British were so greedy as well, like. Sunrise came. He said there was a heavy mist hanging over the land, but the rampart was tall enough. There stood the flag, completely nondescript, in shreds. The flagpole itself was at a crazy angle. But the flag was still at the top. Francis Scott Key went aboard and immediately went into Fort Henry to see what had happened. And what he found had happened was that that flagpole and that flag had suffered repetitious direct hits. And when hit had fallen. But men, fathers, who knew what it meant for that flag to be on the ground. Although knowing that all of the British guns were trained on it, walked over and held it up humanly. That's incredible, isn't it? That's until they died. It's a lump in your throat, doesn't it? Yeah, it gets me this video. Their bodies were removed and others took their place. Francis Scott Key said what held that flagpole in place at that unusual angle were patriots' bodies. He penned the song, 
Oh, say can you see... I think this is getting into the actual Star Sangle banner. I, I will point out um, that the words on the screen on this specific video are incorrect at some points. So just listen to the song and, uh, yeah, we're not going to pause throughout this, just out of respect. And again, just the story leading up to it, it probably gets you just going into it. early light. What so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming. Or the rocket's red glare, to the night, bombs though. bursting in air, gave proof through the night that the flag was still there. Oh say, does that star-spangled banner yet fly and wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave? The debt was demanded. The price, it was paid. Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hate at the twilight's last gleaming Whose broad stripes and bright stars Through the perilous fight Gets to this, especially after that story. ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming And the rocket's red The bombs bursting in air Gave proof through the night That our flag Say, does that star spangled banner yet wait for the land of the free and the home of the Expecting that to be so emotional. Oh wow, man! Yeah, again, literally the home of the free and the land of the brave, isn't it? They do say that Americans, though, are proudest of their flag and their country. Yeah, definitely. No like, one's prouder of their flag than. America. Yeah, so page like you go to America, you see all the yeah, flags everywhere. Like when we've done geo guests before, you just yeah. see everywhere, and you can see why. Yeah. And again, what hit me when I first did this video was how the words actually correlate to I've that never... story really understood the words before yeah. or like homed in on them yeah, or anything like that yeah and now it's like i'm not american but i feel proud <laughs> yeah no definitely um yeah mental uh, if you guys want us to check out more videos like this let us know in the comments if you enjoyed this i uh, would really appreciate if you hit that like button a story like this whether you agree on how accurate it is and stuff like that it's always worth a like because it if anything it shows that you guys are the land of the free and how brave you actually are and uh, yeah, it definitely hits home a lot. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. If you have, smash that like button. Hit that subscribe button if you're new around here. We would really appreciate it. We really would. And uh, we'll see you, legends, in the next one. Peace.